Hey there, Mission Control. Well, we're continuing our series on the system overview, and today we're gonna to be talking about probably the thing that excites me the most about this whole system, and that's the digester. This thing takes up a lot of area. So let's jump in and see what this thing is all about. What the heck is a digester? So this whole area of the building is all digester. Over here, over here, all of it, all for the digester, and it goes down 12 feet down into the ground. So let's talk about the different pieces real fast. This piece right here is a storage tank and it has a mate right over there, same exact thing. And it's just covered in plastic right now because the lid is made of uh, wood. So I just wrapped it all in plastic and there's another layer of plastic underneath of that to help keep the water that's down here in place. So less evaporation. Now, what is this thing exactly? There's a big dome underneath of this that actually uh, holds methane. And it's connected through this manifold system right here, as well as its uh, mate over there, to the digester, which is right behind me here. And the water in there keeps us safe from the methane, so the methane can't get out, create an explosive situation. As the methane is pumped in, it displaces the water that's inside of there, and the methane comes, or the water comes and sits on top of that bubble, keeping the methane from getting out. Pretty ingenious idea and pretty simple. Simple is usually good. So now we're looking at, here I was just showing you uh, the storage tanks for methane. This is a storage tank for what's called digest state. So the digester itself is essentially like a cow's stomach. It has no oxygen in it and that's why it's in, in the ground and it's all filled with liquid uh, is to keep the oxygen out. And as that uh, oxygen free or anaerobic environment is created, certain types of bacteria called methanogens show up. They just show up. They come out of the air, they come out of the ground, they find it. And they get down in there and they start eating the organic matter that you put into the digester. And that's what is happening essentially is that those little bacteria are digesting whatever you put in. So just like you, you eat your food, you grind it all up, your stomach with the acids and the bacteria that you have, turn that into uh, minerals and nutrients for your body which get absorbed and essentially you're left over with a gooey waste or liquid waste substance. And that digest state is the liquid waste substance coming out of the digester. And we use this cement storage tank here. All these are cement storage tanks that are poured in the ground, but this one here uh, holds the digest state. I'm standing outside of HAB1 right now, and right at my feet, this green lid here, this is the inlet to the digester. And you just, you put your stuff in here and it sinks down to the bottom, and this is how you you, you load it. Now we're going to talk about loading the digester in a future video. We have some challenges there. Uh, but this is how we put everything in. Uh, it's where it all goes in and goes down into the stomach, which is 12 feet down in the ground. So this is the digester itself, right here. It looks kind of small, but it's not. This first area that you can actually see above ground is called the neck. Underneath the neck is called the stomach. And the stomach is covered in, in liquid. In between the neck and the stomach, there's perforated cement, basically just cement covers that have enough space in between them that gas can, can percolate up through it. And then just like the storage tank uh, that I showed you earlier for the methane, there's a bubble on this one that stores the methane as well. Everything's covered in water in there, so as the methane is generated in the system, uh, the water, it covers everything. Uh, it keeps it all nice and safe. So, when we first built this, I loaded it up with cow manure, hay, straw, all those types of things, just when it was open. That was the initial load. I could bring the tractor out here because none of this existed. Just loaded it all up, and we've been kind of operating on that ever since, and that was almost two years ago. So this stuff lasts quite a bit of time, uh, and if, if we can get this thing working correctly, we could really have a lot of, um, a lot of methane generated that we could use to run the generator that we have. Or even heat. And we'll talk about heat in the future. Um, but I just wanted to kind of go over the basics here of the digester. This, this thing has the potential to do a lot for us. I'm really excited about it. I'm sitting right now on top of the uh, biogas generator that I got when I bought this system. This, this entire system is designed by somebody else uh, out of China, Puchin. P-U-X-I-N, you can look them up online. And they sell the mold that we bought. And with the mold, you can build 100 of these things if you wanted. Uh, you just gotta have your cement materials locally, do the excavation, of course. 
Um, let's talk about why a digester for power. Can't you use solar? What about wind? Isn't that better? What about biodiesel from algae? Those are all really good questions, questions that I looked at myself. In fact, I started this whole thing with the premise that I could get enough fuel from algae to really power everything I needed, my vehicle, the system, etc. And I spent a lot of time looking at algae. And I realized that the biodiesel version of algae power production, you have to bring in a lot of lye and different chemicals in order to make the biodiesel uh, and clean it and everything. It has a logistical tail that's pretty large that takes a somewhat simple idea, biodiesel from algae, um, and makes it much more complicated and unrealistic. So that idea quickly fell to the wayside. And then I moved on to ethanol, bioethanol from algae. And the capital investment you would need in order to uh, crack open the algae cell uh, to get the sugars and carbohydrates out of it that you need to generate ethanol, it's the same problem as cracking it to get the lipids out to make the biodiesel. It, you, you eventually, you just can't do it uh, easily. And uh, it's not something that any family of four would ever take on by themselves unless you're like me and uh, kind of nuts. But even then, I'm, I'm saying I'm not going to do that. Uh, so I think you'd have to be pretty, pretty serious about spending some money and time to generate enough you know, fuel to do some basic things. It, it wouldn't be enough to really do anything serious. So uh, we looked at that and did the simulation on that, and it's not sustainable either. Um, so then you look at solar, which we have. And uh, it's a primary source of power for us right now because the digester is not up and running. Problem with solar is that on a day like today, when you have overcasts, you don't get a lot of power. And when there's a snowstorm, you don't get any power. And the problem with wind is that if it's not windy, you don't get any power. And in both of these situations, you could end up where there's no sun and no wind and you got no power, so in which case you need a ton of batteries. And uh, we might end up going down that road um, but I'm going to try to generate power using microbes so that we don't have to rely solely on the sun and wind to give us the power we need, but a combination of all three of them potentially could actually give us the power we need to run this whole thing. So that's why we chose the digester. I think it's actually the thing that will separate us from others is uh, while other people have digesters, um, they've never really fully integrated it into the system like what we're trying to do. And if we can figure out how to load this thing, which is the big challenge, which we will talk about in an episode all by itself, um, I, think we'd, I think we'd have a really good thing going. The calculations I have and such show that we'd probably be a little bit lower than the requirements. Uh, means we won't hit the requirements, but we'll, we'll come pretty close. So a little refinement might do some good. That's pretty much what I wanted to share for today on the digester. Uh, it's a pretty cool system and I'm really excited about it. And this summer, we're gonna spend a lot of time uh, solving some of the challenges with the digester, so I look forward to sharing that with you. On our next episode, we're gonna be talking about digester again and heating. Heating. This is a propane heater. It could be converted to methane. Let's talk about that. Um, yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode talking about the digester and how we can use it for power. Uh, if you were to think about it on Mars, Digester is a really cool solution, uh, and how can that help us here, you might be asking? Well, on Mars, recycling everything is, and getting the most out of everything is what you really want to be able to do. So if you could take a system like a digester and you could recycle your waste through it, organic waste, uh, and actually get fuel from it and, and something else you can use for your plants or your algae, sustaining your other systems, that's a win-win. I think the waste management aspect of this uh, like again, you think about it on Mars, you put that here on Earth, can you imagine if we could get rid of more of our organic stuff, putting all your table scraps in here instead of into uh, a trash bag that goes into a landfill? Uh, if you have a farm, you can put your manure in here instead of having it sit out and release CO2 and methane into environment, you can capture it and actually use it. This is, this is a really cool solution and they exist for large farms, but I've only heard of a few people like myself who have this smaller version here in the United States and uh, elsewhere on the planet. Uh, so I'm excited to really get it going. Yeah, I think it's gonna be cool. And I, I think that the digester technology is gonna be the thing that really brings us all together. Can't tell, I'm pretty excited. So 
Thanks for following along. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Patreon if you like. In the meantime, everyone, this is Real Martian. Out.